there, my name is Lucy from Feel Fit with Lucy and today I'm going to be taking you through a short, uh, mostly hit session, we'll begin with some warm up and stability exercises but then we're going to go into a hit session, mostly focused on the lower body, um, partly because especially at this time of year lots of us have lots of run challenges that we want to get into um, and by working on the lower body we can be strengthening all the muscles that we need for running. Um, and partly because also at this time of year, a lot of us have eaten maybe a little bit more than we intended to over Christmas and working these big muscle groups in the lower body is a really effective way to help burn through the calories. Um, but before we go to that, all of my workouts always begin with a mobility warm up, just loosening up our joints, making sure that we've got that free range of motion before we start working a bit harder. Um, and needing that full range of motion. So I want you to start off, you can put a cushion or something under your knee and other legs out to the side. And then we're gonna start up high and we're gonna push that outstretched leg down into the floor. And as we do that, we just slowly sit back down onto our heel. We should feel this stretch down the inside here, just slightly moving as we do that. So push down that foot as we slowly sit down. One more like that. So we're loosening up the muscles, loosening up the joints so that then when we go into the workout, we've got a good range of motion. We're gonna do the same, but now with our toe towards the ceiling. Exactly the same, pushing the heel down into the floor and slowly sitting down. Lovely. <clears throat> Keep that same foot out at the front. And then, um, sorry, I don't know why I got rid of the cushion. <laughs> Keep the cushion there. Um, and then we're going to just gently lean forward. So we're getting stretch into our hamstring. Then we're going to tip the foot out to the side, lean forwards again. And that stretch just feels like we've got it in a slightly different place. Toe up towards the ceiling again, lean forwards, getting that stretch down the back there. And then once more with the toe out to the side. From there up to kneeling, draw up at the front, squeeze the glute forward so I can feel a slight stretch into the front of the hip there. And then I'm just going to relax, go again. So draw up at the front, squeeze into the glute. Really important to be loosening up our hip flexors here. We get very tight if we spend a lot of time sitting here. So we just want to loosen these up so that we've got that full range of motion. So now we're going to draw up at the front and then we're going to push forward slowly. And again, draw up at the front. So keep drawing up at the front as you push forwards, never forcing anything with all these um, mobility exercises. They're just about slowly loosening things up, improving the range of motion, but never forcing it. From here, this is where you can get rid of the cushion if you don't need to. From here, hands either side of the foot, or sorry, just inside the foot. And then we're just going to make a few circles. So imagine you're painting circles with the belly button onto the floor below you. And then a few circles in the other direction. Lovely, from there, up side, up foot forwards, exactly the same on the other side. A few circles in one direction. And then a few in the other. So feeling that hip loosen up. And there, we'll go back to where we came. So drawing up at the front, push forwards. Draw up at the front, push forwards. Once more. And then we're just gonna draw up at the front and hold. So particularly with these hips, as I say, if we spend a lot of time sitting, we get uh, tight at the front of our hips, which is a problem. If, for example, we go out for a run, we want that full range of motion at the hips but we also want to be able to engage our glutes. And if we have tight hips, we often struggle to engage our glutes, our bum muscles. So really important to loosen up these guys. From there, we go back into that hamstring stretch. So lean forwards, come up to out to the side, lean forwards, toe back to the middle, forwards, once more to out to the side. Lovely. And then leg out to the side. So this should be the other one to the one that we started off with. Better with the foot facing forwards. Slowly sit down onto the foot behind. Pushing that leg down into the ground to get that stretch down the inside. Good. And then toe up towards the ceiling. And once more. So hopefully that has loosened up a few bits. We'll just do a quick upper body as well. So kneeling on all fours, and then we're gonna take one hand up towards the ceiling. So we're just opening up through that upper back, reaching forwards, sorry, reaching through, open up, through, and once more. 
and same on the other side. So as I say, all of my workouts, whether it's running, strength conditioning, hip, whatever, we want to make sure we begin with this warm up, not this warm up, but a, a mobility warm up, just to loosen up everything. So we've got that free range of motion, loosen things up and get our mind prepared for the exercise that we've got to come. I then also would generally do a stability round, particularly before doing hip exercises. If we're doing stuff where we're going to be jumping around, we want the muscles to be engaging right. So we're going to start just with really simple clams, lying on our side, knees out in front, opening up the top leg, making sure that as that top leg opens out, that you don't roll backwards. So the temptation is that top foot, sorry, top knee comes out and we roll back like that. I want you to keep that shoulder down towards the ground, look down towards the ground, open out, hold at the top. This is where we're working. We should feel it working in here. We need to pause at the top there to make sure that that glute muscle is engaging. So we should be feeling it in here. If you're not feeling it, put your hand there, feel that muscle working. Get the brain to talk to the bum and say, oi bum, this is your job. Opening out. So imagine you're opening out like a book. Not just lifting the knee, but opening out from here. A few more on this side. Lovely, sort of tight. Exactly the same, so feet in line with the body, knees out in front, making sure that as we open, we don't roll back. So keep looking down towards the mat, opening out. And as I say, this is just getting the glutes engaging so that when we start jumping about in a bit, we've got our glutes engaging, particularly to support where that knee lands. So we often find when we're running or when we're hopping about in a hip class or something, our knees collapse in slightly. So we want to make sure that these guys here, these glute muscles are engaging just to control that position of the knee, position of the hips, so that everything stays stable. So we're reducing our chance of injury. So I would always, before going for a run, before doing any sort of strength conditioning, just want to do a short warm up, just to make sure that the right muscles are working. more on the side so we should be feeling at this sort of side glute muscle there that stabilizes the knee and the hip um, then we're going to go into these big glute muscles at the back here so we want to lie on our back touch our heels to our fingers tailbone tucked under coming up and making a straight line from our knees down to our shoulders now from there you should be feeling your bum muscles working so keep tucking that tailbone under Make sure you're thinking hip bones towards the nose. Don't be arching out through here. Keep thinking hip bones towards the nose. Either you can keep it in this bridge, two-legged bridge here, or if you want to make it a bit harder and you can keep the stability there, take one leg out. I should now be feeling it in my left bum muscle. So whichever foot's on the floor, that's the bum muscle I should be feeling working. Keeping, making sure I'm keeping attention to that pelvis, not making, not letting my back arch. If you feel it, you're feeling it in your back. You can just pull that knee in towards you and that should help to keep things in the right position. So you should be feeling it in the bum muscle on the foot that's on the floor. On the leg that's on the floor, you know what I mean. A little bit longer on this side. So again, just waking up these bum muscles. We often hear, particularly runners, always say, oh, I really can't get my glutes to engage. Well, we have to remind them. If we spend all our time sitting, they're going to get turned off. If we're tied to the hips, they get turned off, so we have to loosen up those hips and then we have to remind the glutes that they've got a job to do. So waking them up before we do our exercise. So back down onto the floor, tailbone tucked under, onto the other side. If you're on a two-legged one, just take a quick break and then come back into another two-legged glute bridge. So remembering or reminding, sorry, that these glute muscles that they have a job to do. They're an incredibly important muscle for us. For our running, they give us power, they give us stability. For our hit exercise, again, they give us that stability, they give us that power. If we want to be thinking about burning calories, they're a big muscle group, so they help to burn through the calories. And they're just important for everyday life. So we have to give them a little wake up so that they're ready to join us the rest of the class. So the rest of the session, once we've Woken up these muscles is going into a kind of strength and hip combo. 
So we're going to do 40 seconds of strength exercise, which is more kind of technique based, making sure everything's working. And then we go into a hip version of that for 20 seconds. So um, I will show you each exercise and then we'll do it. So the first round, we'll do it slowly going through everything and then we'll just carry on blasting through it from there. So the first round will be a bit more stop start. So first round, we're beginning with some squats. So squats, feet hip width apart. Imagine you're standing on a giant piece of paper, push the feet apart. So even as I do that, as I push my feet apart, I can feel my bum muscles working. And then sitting back as if I was sitting into a chair. So I want you to make sure you're sitting back, hips going back behind you rather than knees coming forwards. So we're going to go into those squats. You can work at your own pace. So join in with me now. And then I'll show you just before we get to the end of this round what you've got coming up. So we're doing 40 seconds of these and then 20 seconds of the higher intensity. Now, if you've got any injuries, any niggles, anything that doesn't quite feel right, you can just carry on doing the full 60 seconds of these exercises. If you want to make the squats a bit harder, you can slow them down so you can come down slowly. You can hold at the bottom and go up. You can work on that full range of motion to coming all the way down so that your thighs are parallel with the ground. So getting ready to go. Now we're going into explode. So we're just going down and jumping up. So join in with me now, down low, jump up. 10 seconds to go. And we're gonna go straight into the next round, which is gonna be a plank. Three, two, one, down into a plank. So you can go a straight arm plank or a bent arm plank, holding it here. Now, if you need to take a break at all with a plank, we want to make sure you've got good technique. So we don't want our bum in the air. We don't want our hips hanging down. So squeeze your bum to make sure everything's in a straight line. But if you're feeling it in your back, particularly if you feel you can't hold it, just take a quick break, knees down, join back in. So another 20 seconds to go here. If you want to make it a bit easier, go for a low plank with those elbows down, still making, you've got the, making sure you've got that straight line all the way through. Okay, into mountain climbers, so knees up, either slowly or fast. So driving those knees through. Last five seconds. Good, straight up. Into a, uh, sorry, into a lunge, and we're doing a static lunge. So we're going up and down. Now you want to have your legs far apart front to back, so that as you go down, you want that front knee to be over the ankle, not going forwards over the toes. Keep the hips facing forwards. Think about your posture, so looking straight ahead, nice tall neck, shoulders above hips, hips above that bottom knee. 10 more seconds to go here, and then we're going to take it into a hop from that lunge. So we're going forward, hop, back, hop, back. Adding those arms for power, drive through. So this is one where we wanted to make sure that that front knee doesn't collapse in, so really important to working up those glutes. Swap onto the other side. So other leg forward, back into static lunges on that side. So as we're going here, check down on that front knee. Make sure that front knee isn't collapsing in. Use your glute to keep everything stable. Keep that imaginary helium balloon attached to the back of the head, keeping you nice and tall, so making sure you're not rounding forward. Nice straight back, nice tall back. Shoulders opened out. Give yourself space to breathe. We've got 20 seconds to go here. Then we're going into that lunge back into the hop. And let's go. Lunge back, hop up, whoop, keep your balance. Five seconds to go. Last 
last one, down into a plank, and then from here, knee to elbow, knee to elbow. Slowly, controlled. Again, taking a break if you need to. Don't overdo it. If your hips are feeling niggly, just reduce the range of motion. So the knee doesn't have to come all the way to the elbow. If the plank feels too hard, take a quick break when you need to. Another five seconds here. And then we're going to jump both feet forwards towards one hand and then the other. So jump forwards, back. Last one to each side. Woo. Rest. So one minute rest, then we're going again. Just seeing how we're doing on time. So, I'm gonna do all the same again. So see how that felt. If you need to tweak anything, if you wanna make things harder, if you wanna make things easier, I'll try and give you options as we go. Remember, stay focused on technique, so don't get yourself injured pushing through to do something. If you need to take a quick break or just stay a little bit longer on the strength round before you go into the hip round so you're not getting too tired then that's all good remember we're working we're achieving something if we feel that it's too hard see if you can push through but if you can't give yourself a break make sure you're getting quality not just pushing through for the sake of it about 20 seconds to go grab some water if you've got it stupidly i haven't got a glass of a bottle of water here um then we're going to go again, so we're going to go from the squats onwards, all exactly the same. So it's about 40 seconds of the slowest uh, strength round, 20 seconds of the hip round. But see how you're feeling. If it feels new to you, if you're not used to jumping about so much, do a bit less jumping. Build up slowly over time. Are we ready? Getting ready to go. Squats. Three, two, one, let's go. So with those squats, remember pushing the feet out, hips going back rather than knees coming forwards. Feeling the glutes working at the back. If you want to make them harder, so say work on that depth. So you want to get right down, as far down as you can get, with control. Or you can just go slower, so you can come slowly down. Two, three, hold at the bottom. Two, three, slowly up. Two, three, etc. I'm just going to keep them. Steady pace, I don't want to make it any harder, thank you. This is my third class already. Okay, are we ready? We're going into those jumps. Jumping up high, down low, putting that power in. Last one. Good work. Into your plank. So just holding it there in the plank. Remember, squeeze that bum, make sure everything's aligned, make sure we've not got our bum waving in the air or hips sagging down. If you need to make it easier, go for your bent arm plank, so elbows down on the ground, or you can even go for knees down. So long as you can feel that core working, that's all good. If you want to make it harder, you can go for lifting one foot and then one foot. Making sure as you do that, that the hips stay stable, that they're not waving side to side. Three seconds, then we're back into the mountain climbers. So one foot at a time, jump forwards, let's go. Drive those knees forwards, work to your range of motion, your speed, last five seconds. Three, two, one, up into lunges. One foot forwards, doesn't matter which one. Slowly up and down in those lunges. So nice tall back. Making sure as we go down that that front knee stays facing forward. There's often a tendency for it to collapse in. So we need to use that glute to make sure it's not collapsing in, which is important for our lunges, but it's also good training for running, but it's also good training for those hops that come. If we jump and we land and the knee collapses in, that's often where we start getting knee injuries. So we want to control that knee. Here we go, into those hops. So it's a lunge back, hop up. 
doesn't matter if you just swap legs, as long as you remember what you've done, so that on the next round, you do the other side. Trying to make sure that those hips are level as you come down, as you jump, as you land. Last one, onto the other side. Thinking about your posture, so we start to get tired, we start to collapse down. So thinking helium balloon, touch the back of the head, lengthening up. Nice and tall, through the neck, through the, through the upper body. Hips facing forwards, knees facing forwards. Getting ready to go, lunge back, hop up, let's go. Last one, Whoop. into our plank, and then slowly bringing that knee up towards the elbow, working to your range of motion. You can see I'm a bit tighter on that left side, so it's harder for me to get my left knee to my hip, sorry, to my elbow on that side. No problem at all on that right side, so I'm just slightly adapting over time, hopefully building up that range of motion but not forcing it, particularly in the context of a hit class where you kind of feel that control start to go as you get more tired so just work to your range of motion. If the wrists are hurting from being bent on the floor, make a fist, so you're pushing your knuckles down into the ground or into hopefully a nice soft mat rather than bending the wrists back. Right, are we ready? Here we go. Hop. Hop. Last one to each side. And rest. Good work. So, time for one more round. Quick rest first. So in terms of weight loss, the reason that I've made this set how it is, in terms of burning through the calories, we want to be doing these big muscle groups. So we often think, oh, I want to lose weight from my tummy, so I'm going to do loads of tummy exercises, or I've got flabby arms, so I want to do loads of arm exercises. But if we're actually trying to burn fat, we want to do the biggest muscle groups possible. So legs, much bigger muscle groups than tummy or arm. We can't choose where we lose fat from. We need to lose the fat by burning the calories, and then we can strengthen the arm muscles or the tummy muscles. But if we still have fat on top of them, we're not going to see them. So we need to burn the fat by doing those big muscle groups. So we're doing the strength work through our legs, lunges and squats, big muscle groups, burn through the calories. Um, the more muscle we get in those areas, the more we burn through the calories anyway, because muscle in our body is more metabolically active, so it burns through the calories even if we're sitting around doing nothing. And then that hit is obviously burning through, burn through the calories faster, but we also kind of go into this oxygen debt and then our body has to rebuild itself afterwards and that takes more calories as well. So really good mix for burning through the calories, um, for building a little bit of muscle, but also for giving that stability, that strength to the muscles that we need if we're going to be going out running. Okay, are we ready? Final round. So back into those squats. Ready? Three, two, one, let's go. So thinking hips go backwards, pushing out against that imaginary piece of paper, try and split the piece of paper in half, or screwing the feet out so that our hips go backwards, working into our glutes at the back there. Feeling it in our quads, but hopefully feeling it in our bum as well. We, most of us tend to be very quad dominant. We'll always use quads here, and we need to teach our bum muscles. As I said, we need to teach those bum muscles to engage. So thinking hips go back helps to get the bum muscles working. Feels so easy at the moment, doesn't it? Well, relatively. Right, are we ready? Into those jumps. Getting down low, jumping up high. Let's 
Whoop. <laughs> don't fall over backwards. Or if you do, make sure there's a wall helpfully there to catch you. Last one. Lovely. Down into your plank. So again, if you're getting sore wrists from having your hands flat on the ground, if you have your knuckles like a, if you've had a punch, then knuckles down to the ground, and you can keep the wrist straight. As you're starting to get more tired, if you need to adapt that plank, go for it. So either knees down, put the elbows down, or if you're still feeling game, want to make it harder, then we can do that, lifting one foot, then the other, making sure our hips stay really stable as we go. Getting ready for those mountain climbers, so knees driving towards the elbows, and let's go. Ten seconds to go. Whew. Have to lunges. So, making sure feet nice and far apart, front to back. Making sure that front knee is not creeping forward. So, we've got knee over the ankle here. Not pushing forwards over to the toe. Making sure that that front knee is not collapsing in. Try and keep the hips level. Feeling the glutes engaging. Getting ready for those hops. It's all right, we've got a little bit longer first. If you're feeling anything's getting sore with the hops, just take them out. Keep on the lunges. If you're not used to doing hopping, you need to build up to it. Here we go. So just adapt based on how your body's feeling. Last one. Swap legs. We often feel it's a sign of weakness if we don't do an exercise. We always want to make sure we're doing the hardest one, but I would say it's a sign of strength to know your body, know your limits, know that those limits are temporary, but if you work with what you've got now, respect your body, you're going to be less likely to get injured, which is going to make you stronger in the long run. So don't feel pressured to always do the harder option. Make sure you're doing the option that's right for you. Similarly, don't always take the easy option. Should be challenging. But it should be doable. Here we go, into those hops. Ten seconds to go. Three, two, one. Down into your plank. Final plank. So if you're still feeling okay, you're taking those knees up towards the elbows with control, steady. Getting ready to go, hopping both feet to one side, or you can just step them. Go full right for you, but this is the last 20 seconds of hit. Last few seconds, stick with it, and done. breath back and then we'll take it into some stretching grab some water if you're more sensible than me and you have some to hand so lying on your front grabbing the heel in towards your bum making sure that hip stays down to the ground push that hip down to the ground and you should be getting a stretch into your quads the front of the thigh on the leg that you're drawing the heel in Keep pushing that hip, uh, hip down towards the floor, drawing the heel in, getting a good stretch into the front of your thigh. So hopefully you have enjoyed today.
hopefully you feel better for it as well. Exercise is so great for getting those endorphins going, for shaking you out, so we can, especially beginning of the year, feel a bit blur with everything. Hopefully that's helped to waking you up, feel a bit more sprightly. Anything that you couldn't do, don't worry. Something that you can work on and get stronger in the future. So rather than beating yourself up for what you couldn't do, what you didn't do, praise yourself for what you did do. If you're still watching this right now, I'm presuming you've done at least some of this class. So congratulations to you. Swapping legs. And in doing that, you've been building that stronger body, that more resilient body, as well as burning through those calories, as well as getting the heart rate up, all good for general health and mental health. Hopefully you have enjoyed this session. If you're interested in knowing any more about me, as I say, my name's Lucy. I'm a personal trainer and a strength and conditioning um, for triathlon. Um, I'm a triathlon coach. I'm tired, I'm a run coach. I write training plans for doing triathlons and running, all different levels. So if you're interested, my website, feelfitwithlucy.co.uk, or you can find me over on Facebook at feelfitwithlucy as well. So pulling back fine towards you to get a stretch into your glute there. You've worked those glutes. If you're not used to using them, you might feel them hurting a bit more tomorrow. Don't worry, just give it a bit more of a stretch or have a go at foam rolling as well. If anything's feeling tight, if you've got a tennis ball or something, they're really good for getting into those glutes. Um, and yeah, just keep stretching anything out that doesn't feel, or that feels a bit tight. Something actually feels injured though, you're better not stretching it, I would just rest it for a bit. So often in January we get very carried away and do loads more exercise than normal, which is brilliant. Um, but sometimes we overdo it a bit, so make sure you're taking good rests in between. Leg out, bending forward, stretching into your hamstring. Make sure you're taking good rests in between as well. Um, not just working and working and working. All exercise you want to build up gradually rather than going from not doing a lot in December maybe to doing way too much or way more than your body is used to in January. So always just building up slowly. On to the other side. And always remembering the hardest bit is always hard starting the workout. So try, if you have big plans to do a workout but then you're like, oh, I just don't know if I can be bothered, just get it started. Promise yourself you just do the first five minutes. Most of the time you do the first five minutes, you get into it, you enjoy it, you start get, getting going. But just get yourself committed to do that first five minutes and then see where you go from there. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's workout. I have enjoyed working out with you and I look forward to hopefully seeing you again soon. So feelfitwithlucy.co.uk or um, Facebook forward slash feelfitwithlucy. Take care, guys.